Hi, my name's Tony Chapman. I'm the host of Chatter That Matters. In this age of noise, I cut through the chaos and confusion to focus on what matters most to your life and your livelihood. And on this episode, I chat with... Excited today, we're going to talk to Jen Menard, one of the feature entrepreneurs in the Small Business Matters series. She has a company called Staff Shop, and what she has done as an entrepreneur is truly extraordinary. For that, you're going to have to listen to the podcast. What I want to talk to Jen about today is what's happening since. Jen, welcome to the uh, show. Thanks, Tony. Good to be here. Do we have somebody else in the picture? Who are you going to introduce her? I do. My rock star business partner, Allison Hernandez. Since the podcast, tell me a little bit about how your business is performing. What have you learned about resilience? It's been a super enlightening experience. I received a ton of emotional, inspirational feedback. Uh, There's a woman who actually called me crying. There's people that asked uh, me to speak at their next event. It just prompted me to think, you know, this is important. We have to keep sharing stories. Uh, Storytelling heals. The message that I've been hearing is COVID's gift of time. Uh, And and I think that we probably will miss this time when it's over. I'm hearing a lot of stories around people just really changing their perspective in in a deep way, especially if your definition of success was Uh, the corporate ladder rise like it used to be for me where it's all things material and now you're stuck at home kind of facing what's real and important i I guess i'm a walking example of that because my uh, wedding was rescheduled as i mentioned in the podcast Uh, my business was flipped on its head and i barely paid myself a dime in 2020 and i've never been happier because i've been focused on serving upward and outward and instead of myself and so Uh, Don't get me wrong, we still have a bunch of irons in the fire to get ourselves out of this mess, but uh, two of my favorite sayings uh, now are, don't let anyone steal your peace and never waste a good crisis. So Allison and I are focused on that. So Allison, in the podcast, Jen was pretty open and honest about her background and how she had to choose the right path in life. You too have a sort of a, a story to tell about your background and kind of defining who you are today. I mean, mine, mine starts pretty normal and, and easy. I had a, a really happy childhood. I had a great uh, supportive family with strong values, kind of a, a nice head start in life, if you want to look at it that way. Um, a few health struggles. Um, I am blind in one eye and I had some problems with my kidney and with my feet. And so, uh, you know, growing up, I, I knew what it meant to live with pain and to feel like you look different and some of those things. but. Uh, Overall, I think that really that just gave me sort of an extra amount of grit and resilience and self-confidence over time. But I think that 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 confidence and that freedom and that self-assurance that I had over time kind of became a little bit my undoing in a way. I, as I started to approach college years, I was so good at knowing and, and affirming myself and knowing my own value that I just forgot to surround myself with people who treated me the same. Um, and uh, I, I inadvertently built a bit of a network around myself of toxic friendships and relationships, um, people who didn't respect me. And I think there's a saying that goes, uh, you're, I guess you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And uh, I really experienced the negative side of that um, with this kind of situation I painted myself into. Uh, a little weird for, for someone like me with such a, a, great, um, a great network and support around me, loving parents. Um, but I was a little ashamed of kind of the way that I had isolated myself and surrounded myself with this type of negativity. So I, I really started to cut off my support network and uh, ended up in a bunch of really bad relationships, one of which almost ruined my life, actually. Who did you turn to to kind of get you to course correct and realize that the company you keep really is uh, often identifies who you are and who you'll become? You know what? It's it's scary because at, at one point I really had no mentors. I was sort of distancing myself from anyone uh, who could have a positive effect on me. And at some point I did think, Tony, that I wouldn't get out of it, as you say. Um, I, I kind of... I started experiencing the cycle of abuse from the inside, right? And that that physical, psychological, emotional abuse cycle is, it it really shuts you down and makes you unable to even respond to a mentor or someone who could potentially help you out of that situation. Um, I thought about leaving every day, but I was terrified. I couldn't do it. At one point, I think I just, I'd really had enough and felt sick of being isolated and powerless. And I I did what you do. I I called my mom and uh, she, uh, she didn't ask me any questions. Thankfully, I wasn't ready to answer them. She didn't, you know, give me a hard time about not talking to her for so long. She just showed up with a truck and and moved all my stuff with me and kind of saved my life in one afternoon. 
I want to bring it to the two of you because when Jennifer talked in the podcast about her mentor and, and one day he looked at her and said, you can't be everything. You know, you, you, you think of Walt Disney. Walt Disney works because he has Roy Disney and they find a way to do a lot of things together and better. And when uh, Jennifer was describing you, she said, well, that's my Roy. So tell me a little bit, you two, about how you work together and how did it all come about? I'll never forget that day, Tony, actually. I walked into Jeff's office and it's not every day you, you find a Roy. And after we both interviewed Allison, I remember sitting in his chair and he looked at me and he said, she's a gift. And I said, she, she is. And then he said, okay. He's like, I figured this out. You, you can't do this without her. She can't do this without you. And so my job's done here. I'm just going to get out of your way. When I come home uh, from flying around with all these wild ideas, she has this way of kind of um, being my calm, steady helipad that I can land on. She asks the right questions and extracts the information that's required in order to bring my vision to life. And so uh, some will refer to me as the mega heart uh, and her the mega mind. If you find a business partner or a even any relationship, even if it's personal and it's uh, of value, uh, protect it and invest in it. Just to add to that, one of the things that we do is we support each other through failure. Failure is a big problem for people. And so we celebrate and embrace failures and, and make it a comfortable setting for us and our team. I don't want to freak people out or anything, but above all of that, uh, just based on our values and our principles, we report to God. and. Um, that's really who we are and, and how we work. So uh, we don't judge, we don't, we're not trying to convert people. We don't, uh, we accept everyone. Uh, but I, I just, for transparency's sake, I think it's important to mention so that um, you know exactly who we are. So aside from profit, it's very important to us that we keep moving the needle uh, in people's lives. So how do you, in this world where everybody's trying to define who they are culturally, and they're all really, in some ways, becoming very tribal and territorial. How do you put your religion out front and still know that it's that people are invited into your organization, no matter what their faith is or lack of faith? Love conquers all. And so if you're coming to add things with that value and that sense of people are first and uh, what matters is doing the right thing and acting with integrity and, and treating everyone with love and, and the way that you would want to be treated. Um, really, the, the sort of tribalism piece that you mentioned really takes second fiddle. Uh, I think we, we just want everyone to feel comfortable. We want everyone to feel that they can reach their full potential and that they're being supported. And I know that, you know, my story I mentioned, I, I would never have come out of that if there weren't people who didn't give up on me and who were praying for me and waiting for me and, and, and having that is is invaluable really and i think if we can provide that to other people in an employment sense in a business sense um this is why the partnerships i have now have really transformed my life um nothing changed about how i am as a professional but uh creating that strong network um and of people that you can really trust is really what made the difference for me and i think that's kind of what it comes down to that's a beautiful answer by the way and something we can all learn from is a sense that love conquers all part of the theme of today and the podcast is being your ability to listen to each other and listen to other people and listen generously and act upon advice. And the podcast, we bring in experts. It's Stephen Shaw, who produced The Rolling Stones, and Evening with Oprah, Jurassic Park. Uh, Joe Jackman, one of the world's big thinkers on change, came to the table and offered you some great insights on your business. Have you acted on anything that, that, that they offered you? The one thing I got clear about real quick as for Joe's advice was uh, the ups and the downs, so the benefits and the consequences of working with us uh, versus uh, a competitor. And what we do sometimes is, is a mouthful to explain. So getting clear on that was key. And I, I narrowed it down to the top three benefits, top three consequences, uh, along with the rest of the differentiators. So hopefully that's helpful for the clients. Um, with regards to Stephen, uh, he was mentioning, you know, invest in your assets. And so since then, um, we already have the infrastructure to staff any industry we want. So not only have we pivoted to essential services, but uh, we've added security, temperature checks, PPE, um, return to work procedures. The biggest opportunity we have right now with what's going on in the world is tracking uh, diversity and inclusion within uh, our workforce and making sure that we're creating equal employment opportunities for everyone that works for us. So we're very excited about that project. I want to finish the interview by asking What's next uh, for Staff Shop? We're excited. We've expanded our list of services. We've partnered with 
cleaning companies uh, so that they can take care of cleaning and disinfecting when businesses reopen while we support them with staff. And we landed a new client that has a concert series across Canada uh, featuring Garth Brooks at the end of this month. So I'll be talking to the talented Walt and Roy, AKA Jennifer and Allison from Staff Shop. I learned a lot of things today. The first thing I really appreciate both doing the podcast and obviously this interview as well is how important spirituality and humanity is to these people that they really are realizing that a lot of what we can do going forward is about coming together it doesn't have to be through religion it doesn't have to be through ethnicity or gender it really has to be through just love and respect the second thing is talk about pivoting on a dime i mean this was a business that focused entirely on events but realized through COVID that they are actually in the business of staffing. And they went into essential services, make sure workplaces and restaurants and stores feel safe. All of that and more is why Staff Shop is an entrepreneur to watch. And thank you both for joining Chatter the Madison. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony.